Okay, so today I'm going to be playing by creating a piece of assemblage. Uh, I've never done a piece of assemblage, assemblage before. So I originally said I wasn't going to film this, um, but I've changed my mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the camera on and I'm just going to record whatever it is that I do. Now, for those that don't know what I'm going to be doing, assemblage is, is like a collage, but with 3D objects. So it's bits and pieces all curated together to create one piece of artwork, which is why it's referred to as assemblage and not assemblage, because it has its roots in collage. So that's why we pronounce it with that age bit at the end rather than the idge, if you like. So um, I'm going to switch over to my overhead camera because I've already started to paint the um, frame that I'm going to be using. Um, that's when I decided I was going to film. So let me just switch over and you can see what I've done. So the frame that you can see here is just one of these crafting frames. It's only um, about 12 centimetres, which is about um, four and a half centimetres, four and a half, four and a half inches or so across. It's not a very big piece. Um, and I'm just painting it completely with Dina Wakely black gesso. So I want to give the entire frame, it's made of wood, it's only soft wood, um, but I want to create um, uh, an even base all the way around. So I'm going to just paint it to unify all that colour before I start adding in my assemblage pieces. Assemblage, assemblage. I still um, have difficulty actually saying assemblage rather than assemblage. But there you go. So literally just give it the one coat of black gesso. So this Dina Wakely stuff will not um, need more than one coat because it's absolutely super duper perfect black gesso. And normally I find that even when I'm painting gesso onto um, plastic items that I don't need two coats, one is sufficient. But if you want to add two, if you're doing a piece, then you do what you feel is right for your project. Don't just take my word for it. Okay, so, right, so I'm gessoing, going to do everything, all four sides. Obviously I need to get it dry because I've just painted myself into a corner because I can't paint anymore without getting my fingers in it. So I'm going to quickly dry this off with my heat gun and then I'll be right back just to finish off painting and adding the black gesso to everything. I may even do the back in a minute, but let's just grab the heat gun. Okay, so that bit is pretty much dry, enough for me to be able to paint the rest of the frame. So really, really quickly, give it a really, really good going over and then I'm trying to make sure I get keep it in shot because I get carried away. But there you go. Okay, so we're going to paint the back as well and then I will dry it off. So you've seen me start, so I'll jump to the end where it's all painted and all dry. Because nobody got time to sit and watch paint dry. Okay, so my frame is now completely painted black and is all dry. I have a dictionary page here that has the word rocket and the word robot. Just see if I can hold that up for you. In the background, I'm going to use this as the back piece to stick all my bits and pieces for my assemblage, assemblage, assemblage box there. So I've already 
kind of offered it up to try and get the measurements for the paper and the actual sizes. So I'm going to just trim that down with some scissors. Just kind of using the lines on the page as a guide. That's pretty much it. And then I'm just going to trim off the side. like so, and then I can just push that into the corner. Yep, that's going to work. And then I can see exactly where I need to cut. Now it doesn't matter if it's not a 100% perfect fit because it's got a black base, so you're not necessarily going to see it perfectly anyway. There we go. So that's going to go into the back of my assemblage box. So I need to glue it in. Even though it looks as though it's not going to come out. So out you come. So all I'm going to do is just take a small piece of move those scissors out, out of the way. I keep stabbing myself with them because they're very, very sharp. I'm just going to take some matte medium and I'm going to go around the inside of the box. Let's paint the inside and then I'll paint the underside of the paper. Well, I'm using matte because I don't want it shiny. So that should do us. And when it dries it should go completely clear anyway. So. make sure we've got the right size. So if I just quickly go over that to make sure that there's no um, bubbles or wrinkles going to appear in it, hopefully. But like I said, it is only a background piece anyway, so let's see if we can get that in. Let's see if I can try and get it in without getting my head in shot. That's it. Brilliant. And then I can just go over the top just to seal it in, just like we would with a little bit of Mod Podge, which pretty much is what we're doing. Okay. Let's get that dried and I'll be right back. So the paper's now all stuck down and nice and dry. Um, I took the opportunity just to go back round on the inside where some of the glue had dried white just to hide that and get that dried as well. So, the edge of the frame, I've got some Vodka Martini Silver Metallic Paint from Indigo Blue. So just around that side, I'm going to just lightly, just want to lightly dry brush a little bit of that Silver Metallic Paint just on the top. Not necessarily just to pull out the grain or anything, but just to add a little bit of metallic kind of shine to it because the piece will have a robot on it. So I want it to have some kind of metallic -y, industrial kind of electric feel to it. So I'm just adding a little bit of that silver paint onto the frame will just help pull the piece together, or well, I think so anyway. I may be completely wrong, it may turn out to be a complete load of rubbish, but you don't know until you actually try, do you? And there you go, you see, probably put a little bit too much on. So let's just go back around the other sides, add a bit more. Thank you. 
I'm only doing the tops, I'm not doing the sides and the back. I'm trying not to get any on the inside of the frame either. Now that kind of looks like it's distressed, which is why I did it in black because I wanted that dark colour to show through. Am I happy with that? I think I am actually. I think I am. He says, still titivating, I think is the correct word. Go. I'm probably going to keep on going until I end cover it completely so I'm going to stop that's it that's not going to do anymore let's get it dry and cleaned up okay so my frame is now completely dry so I'm just going to pop that there and bring in the items that I'm going to use for the assemblage so I have two pieces of um, cabling or wiring connectors. So that's two blocks of that connecting what we call caterpillars. I don't know what you want to call them. Uh, I have two old radio valves stolen from Ian's collection. Actually, he doesn't use these ones because they've got metal bottoms. So they were going to get thrown in the bin. I have the insides of an old webcam. So I've got the printed circuit from an old webcam. In fact, that is the lens from the actual camera itself. And I think that would make a great piece for the assemblage. And also I have that fantastic little clockwork, not clockwork, that wind up robot mister. So he's also going to go um, as the focal point of my assemblage piece. I think he's so cute. And for less than a pound, what can you know, you, you just couldn't ask for something better. So like I said, I did get two. This is the other one. This one's a little a little black and blue one. I think the boxes just on their own are fantastic. I love them. Anyway. So I'm going to put the assemblage piece together using my hot glue gun, which hopefully will be fully charged. He says, that should only take a few seconds to get to full capacity. So when it stops flashing, it's done and ready. There you go. That didn't take long at all. So to start off with, I'm going to glue in the pieces for the junction box. So they're going to go in first. So right up into the corner. Don't need a huge amount of this glue. Perfect. So they're not going to go anywhere. And the next, I'm going to use the valves, but I'm going to use it with the dimple showing. So that's going to be the bit at the back. So I'm really, really quick about getting these in and getting it. There we go. So the dimples of the valve fit perfectly into the holes of those junction boxes down below. So absolutely spot on. So again, use the dimple and then we can apply the glue all the way down and then pop it down and get that right in there. So it probably just needs to come a little bit further that way. So if I just to kind of ease it out, that's probably going to pull a bit of the paper off, but it doesn't matter because it's going to have it's going to be covered anyway. 
I just want to move it a little bit just to make it a bit more centered. That should do it. Now if I drop that in over the top, that should fit better. Come on, come on, come on, quickly. That's it. Brilliant. Ah, looking good so far. Well, I'm happy with it. Okay, so next we have the piece of um, circuitry, the circuit board. So I'm going to place that so it's in the middle. So I'm going to put a fair bit of glue on this one because it's kind of uneven and I want to bed it in. So I'll make sure there's plenty of glue in the background. And then hopefully be able to position that so it's right smack in the middle. Cool. Little robot, time for you to go on. Now I'm going to add quite a liberal squeeze so I can try and get it coming back through again. It turned itself off. Come on. Do as you're told. Technology. Ah, is it coming out now? Ugh. One drawback with these things. That's it. Now you're coming out. So we need a real decent sized blob on the back. Turn him round and then we can position him just where we want him. There we go. <laughs> Very cute. Okay, next up, I'm going to just stick a couple of these little sprockets just on the bottom. So just like so, just add a little bit of glue there. And then a little bit of glue on the back of that one. About there and then I've got my little cutout from the packaging this is taken from the side of the box which is just here so I've cut that out from one of the boxes I've kept all the pieces this is the box lid from the red one so I'm going to keep that in use for a different day and then I'm going to add a little splodge of glue underneath there and there and just on the end and then we can seat that just on the bottom like so and that glue underneath just gives it a little bit of stability like so and there we go my mini assemblage box is complete and I'm very happy with it. <laughs>